Hey there, little warriors. I'm Steve. Now, if you watched my mini-series from last year on 3D printing for historical wargamers, you know that at the time, I was purely an FDM guy and had zero experience with high-detail UV resin printers. Well, not anymore. Let me introduce you to the newest member of my 3D printer collection, the Shadow 5.5S UV LCD resin printer from Kitty Tech. Before I get into my thoughts and experiences with this printer, I should say that it was provided for the purposes of this review by the folks at GearBest.com, and there's a link in the description below to GearBest.com's product page for the printer. If you like what you see today and decide that you do want to make the purchase, of course we would ask that you do it through that link, because doing so will help support what we do here at Little Wars TV. I should also mention that I've now gotten two of my three printers from GearBest.com. Not just this one, but the Ender 3 that was in my FDM printing series last year. Both transactions were great. Now in this review, I'll be going over my experiences using this printer over the last month. And spoiler alert, those experiences have been pretty great. Uh, it has exceeded my expectations for a printer that, depending on whether you catch it on sale or not, runs anywhere from about 300 to 400 US dollars. Now that being said, it's not perfect, and I'll be going over the things that I didn't quite like as well. One thing I won't be doing today, though, is comparing this printer to some of the better-known UV resin printers in this price range that are out there. I'm talking about printers like the Anycubic Photon or the Elegu Mars. Now why not? Well, because I haven't used those printers, and so I really don't have a basis for comparison. Now, with that out of the way, let's get rolling. Kitty Tech packs a lot of stuff into the box, and does it very well. You, of course, get the printer itself, which I think looks fantastic. No, this doesn't affect the print quality one bit, but the styling on this unit makes it look like the shadow would be right at home sitting on Tony Stark's workbench. You also get a manual, power cord, some basic tools for assembly, some tools that you'll use for printing, nitrile gloves and a mask that you should always use when you're handling resin, a 250 gram bottle of that resin, and a spare FEP film. Perhaps my two favorite things you get with the printer, however, are this super thin sheet of paper and this flash drive. The paper is used for build plate leveling and is the perfect thickness for the job. Better yet, it has the instructions for how to do the leveling right on it. This is a simple yet very helpful idea that I just love. As for the flash drive, okay, maybe it's not the drive that's all that exciting, but what's on it that I find so great. Of course, it has a test file for printing and a digital copy of the manual, but it also has a copy of Chitubox, a slicer specifically designed for prepping resin printing files. Finally, and perhaps the best part, the flash drive has a series of short videos on a number of topics from assembly to leveling all the way to using Chitubox. In short, there was a lot more in the box than I expected from a resin printer at this price range. While some resin printers come fully assembled these days, the Shadow 5.5S is not one of them. That being said, the assembly process is very easy. Basically, all you're doing is, is peeling some film off of some things, uh, leveling and tightening the build plate, and then sliding in the resin vat. Every step is explained in very clear detail in the manual or through the videos that you have on the flash drive, and I found very, very easy. It took me about 20 minutes. Now, I've already talked about the leveling paper, and I'll mention it again because it really does make leveling almost impossible to screw up. And that's important, because if you don't have a level build plate, your prints will fail. Once you're done with assembly, you'll have your printer. And it's a printer that feels really solid. It weighs in at about 16 pounds, and really feels stable wherever you set it. The dual Z-axis rails on the back make sure that the printer stability is carried through to build plate stability as well, and that's great for helping to ensure successful prints. And the build plate volume, while small compared to most FDM printers, is roughly the standard for low-cost resin printers at roughly 4.5 inches wide by 2.5 inches deep by 6 inches high. Printing files on the Shadow 5.5S is actually very simple. You basically just have to pour resin into the resin vat, insert the flash drive into the USB port on the side, and then use the touch screen to choose that file you want to print, and press go. 
Now I will say that I was in for a little surprise when I first turned on the Shadow 5.5S because the touchscreen displayed the name Elegoo Mars. Well, it turns out that the Shadow 5.5S uses the same mainboard and firmware as the Mars, so that's why. I should also point out that while actually printing out the files you create is very simple on the 5.5S, um, for an FDM guy like me, actually prepping those files in slicing software was very different from FDM and took some getting used to. Unlike FDM printers that build models from the bottom up and where you can watch as each layer is added, resin printers build their models from the top down and each layer is cured via UV light at the bottom of the resin vat, away from view. Most importantly, this means that generating supports for resin prints is different than generating supports for FDM printing, and so there was a learning curve for me there. That was something I was going to have to become comfortable with with any resin printer, though, not just the Shadow 5.5S. And Kitty Tech, by including the videos on how to use ChidoBox, a copy of ChidoBox, and instructions in the manual as well, really did the best they could to help me along, and it was appreciated. Of course, all of the good things that I've talked about here today wouldn't matter at all if it couldn't deliver the super fine, high detail resin prints that I've heard so much about from these types of printers. Well, fortunately, the Shadow 5.5S delivered. I've now used up the bottle of resin that came with the printer, printing out test prints, minis, tanks, and ships, making sure to try some of the same models that I've printed in the past with my FDM printers. The level of detail that ends up on the model and the crispness of that detail is simply fantastic. It's also possible to maintain that detail even as I scale down the models. For example, the barrel on this T3485 didn't fully survive its journey to 6mm scale when I printed it on my FDM, but that was no problem on the shadow. Then, looking at this Zulu Warrior, while it was too much to expect the shaft of the spear to print well after being shrunk from 25mm to 6mm scale, the rest of the detail remains. There is no doubt in my mind that I'll be using the Shadow 5.5S for all of my smaller scale printing from now on, while my FDMs will remain great for terrain and larger models. I'm sure by now you've picked up on the fact that I really do like this printer. The Shadow 5.5S really does a lot of things right. That being said, it doesn't do everything right. So let's talk about some of the things that I wasn't too fond of. First, there's the fan noise. If the printer's on, the fan in the back is on. As it has to be, since venting the resin fumes is necessary when working with the resin. Problem is, it is not a quiet fan. Now that may not end up being much of a problem simply because due to the, the smell of the resin and the fumes that are involved in resin printing, you're not going to want to use this printer in a place that's close to where you're living your everyday life. So if it's away someplace in the basement or the garage or a workshop, you may not hear the noise of the fan anyway. The second issue is really more of a potential issue and it arises from the fact that this is a new printer. It's only a few months old. In fact, it's so new that if you go to the Kitty Tech website, it's not even listed as one of their products there. Hopefully that'll change soon. But the, the problem I'm specifically talking about is because it's new, there's no community of users that has you know, sprung up around it. And that means if you run into trouble that you can't solve yourself, you can't jump on Facebook or Reddit or something like that and find fellow Shadow 5.5S users that can help you work through that process. You have to hope that tech support from Quiddy Tech itself is going to be enough. The third thing I'm going to mention is a problem that's cropped up about three or four times over the course of the month that I've been using this printer. When you hit print on the touch screen, this print bed should lower into the vat of resin almost all the way down to the screen that's on the bottom, the LCD screen that's on the bottom, which flashes a pattern of UV light up, which cures each layer of the resin as it builds. What's happened to me, though, on those three or four occasions is I hit the play button and the platform, the build platform, doesn't lower. And even though it doesn't lower, the LCD screen is still curing resin on the bottom. It's still flashing the UV light up through the clear bottom. Now, what that means is I don't actually end up getting the print that I want. All I get is a layer or two of cured UV resin on the very bottom of the vat, and that has to be scraped off. Uh, you know, so this, this is a problem. I'm not really sure what causes it. 
Uh, I do know that it's a fairly easy workaround. Because this only happens at the very beginning of the print, I hit print on the touch screen, and then if that platform doesn't immediately start lowering, I just turn the power off. Because then when I turn the power on, go to the print file again, hit play, every time it has worked just fine, gone ahead and lower. And by hitting the power so quickly, it doesn't give the UV light at the bottom any time to really cure the resin that's down there. So there you have it, the Quiditex Shadow 5.5S UV LCD resin printer. I think this is a great printer. It gives you a lot of bang for the buck and is perfect for someone who's just jumping into resin printing for the first time, because that's what I was a month ago when this arrived on my doorstep. Once again, if you think you would be interested in purchasing this printer, I encourage you to use the link to the GearBest.com product page that we have in the description below, as it does help support the channel. And if you like what we do here at Little Wars TV and want to continue getting all of our content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here on Little Wars TV.